literally all hands on deck today. We've got quite a few workers here sorting out our davits. We haven't actually spoken much about the davits yet, but they're being retrofitted. You can remember the old ones, they were like these, um, what were they, Nate? Were they carbon fiber davits? Yeah, design was funky. Design was funky. So Seaman said, you know, we've designed some new davits. Did you want them? And we we're like, heck yeah. But the other thing that's packed up is the ice machine. So Nick is currently, hopefully, in the process of fixing that. We had to wait for some parts to be shipped out from Italy. And a couple of other guys have just arrived and I don't actually know what they're doing. Phil, our fairy godmother, he is in the process of fixing, hopefully, our water maker. So it's all a bit hectic, but everything needs to be done, hopefully, for tomorrow because we want to leave and go to Malaysia and get on with sailing to Phuket. We have exactly one month to get from here to not even to Phuket, we have one month between now and getting on the ship. So we have probably about three weeks between now and hopefully getting to Phuket. Yeah, we just want to get out of here and get going now. But we can't leave until everything's fixed, so that's what today is all about. I'm Teresa, this is Nick, and this is Ruby Rose 2, our floating home. Join us as we settle into life on board our brand new catamaran, documenting our adventures and never shying away from the reality of boat life. Subscribe to our channel and leave a comment because we love to hear from you and a big thanks to our community of patrons. Good morning. It is 8 o'clock in the morning and honestly it must be 35, 36 degrees already and 100% humidity and we have decided, well we have to get our, we have to get our screech up and, and put on for tomorrow. If we leave tomorrow, then think we will. There's too much work outstanding. We still have no water maker, no davits, we have no cushions for our whatever we do, we don't have the fabric work done i actually think that's a fabric guy there he's got a tape measure so but we have to get this screech up and the last time we tried to get it up we ended up with all sorts of shenanigans didn't we that's not going to happen this time is it no but we will obviously be it. all right then been here for over a week and uh when we got here we're like oh it should only take us a few more days and then we'll be able to get going one delay after another and our water maker Packing up, obviously. We're very much hoping that Phil can fix it today. Nick reached the end of what he could do yesterday. He tried as much as he could and nothing else that he can do. So Phil said he'll come today and fix it for us, I hope. Really want to get going now. Feeling quite fancy. All right, one more job done. So in the uh, the last dash to get out of out of the tire, Phil Harper, who we've, we've been working with Phil here for eight months, eight months getting this boat fixed. So uh, he's picked up our last packages. So today it's going to be a frenetic activity. We have a non-working ice machine. He has to part. He's got to swap that out. We have non-working davits. He's got to swap that out, and he's got the fiberglass custom parts to fit those. He have, we have a non-working water maker and that has to be fixed before we leave here. And I don't think, if that's an easy fix, I will have my celebratory beer tonight with, with gusto. And then these, is, is these are our packages which we bought. And um, I should explain what's in here as I do the uh, shitty unboxing that we're going to do. So, things that I bought. Fenders. We need normal size fenders. They have to be inflated. This is... Um, by our side for the tanks. 50 meters of thin mooring lines for you to Yay. tie the boat off to. They're easy to throw, yeah. but these, in, in, a, in, a, in a crosswind, in a big crosswind, you're gonna have to use the big lines. No, that's okay. Yeah. Poor Nick is out there sweating into his t-shirt, trying to get our bloody ice machine fixed. And we're not even 100% confident that the issue is actually the issue. There you go. I, I wouldn't bother with the screw. But if I put that in, the glue, it was, the glue will set round it. It's not, the, the problem is that the, the screw isn't captive. So if it goes in like that, it actually sets around the thread. Yeah. Take the excess off. Look at that. How are you going, Nick? Our guardian angel, it's Phil, too, is... Uh, it's, it's too messy to be filming, guys. Oh, we have to... Sensor, sensor. We have to so we're trying to get Davids, an ice machine, and a water maker working. And right. so far, we're... I'll let put the water maker back together. Um, okay so that we can get back to testing the water maker. Right, thank you. Great. Zero, zero, zero out of three. Okay, well we would all, we will definitely have the thing we need to leave, which is the bloody davits by the end of today. Yeah. For the davits, there's three of the pads on, they need to be sicker flexed. Yeah. I think, I imagine Phil will leave the 
everything, the dinghy in the water tonight so that everything can set. The, the, the ice machine just doesn't work. Do we know what the problem is? Solenoid is not operating. The solenoid is a little switch yeah. that goes on and off. It's this little blue thing here. So fresh water comes in here. Yeah. And then that opens and it lets water in there. And then that then goes into the ice machine. It fills the ice tray. When it's frozen, it inverts and drops ice into the tray. Well, we are going to have a very, very, very big awning. <laughs> but I don't think there's any such thing as too much shade. And we'll be grateful when we are spending the summer in Greece and Turkey and wherever it else is that we're going. And uh, we've got loads of shade on the boat. So yeah, it's fun. Oh, so much. Phil Harper's like our benevolent uncle. He just turns up and gets shit done. Good morning, good morning, good morning. From the saloon of Ruby Rose Duh. For those eager beavers amongst you, yes, I know I look shit. We have been here a week now, but it is uh, very much a case of we are meant to be leaving tomorrow and there is a lot of work to do. So, in a nutshell, we have new davits installed, which now have little teeth on them. They look like little molars. We have our canvas guys outside. We ordered a lot of canvas work, specifically sunscreens, for when our patrons come and visit in Europe next, this year. Canopy's back and uh, they're just fitting it now. It is massive. It's about twice the size as what I had in my head. It's pretty big, isn't it? I'm not quite sure how much it's fitting it. I think if we're at anchor, then it will be good. We have a marquee. One has a, one has a marquee. We've refueled. We have to provision this afternoon. We have to check out with immigration in the next hour. I don't think we're allowed to film that. Thai immigration are super like strict about things like that. We have some non-functioning bits on the boat. We have a non-functioning water maker. Phil is um, trying to fix it. We have 600 litre water tank and we've got about nine days to go, which is more than enough with bottled water for us to take small showers, not use the washing machine and be okay. So we're gonna leave without a water maker if he can't fix it today. The fabric guy has our cockpit cushions because they fell apart. The ice machine started working last night. So Vitafrigo literally shipped all the new parts out. Um, and the ice machine is making ice now. So I know that's not a big thing, but I don't like having broken things on a boat. So it is our last day. And we have to come and say our oh, goodbyes. I guess we were like, not even pleasantly surprised, like pretty overwhelmed with yeah. how nice it is here. It's one of the nicest places we've ever been to. But two things, two people that have actually made our life like insanely easy while we've been here. Number one is uh, Phil, who you've seen, Phil Harper. The other person I do want to introduce you to is Scott. Morning, Scott. Oh, I'll film, I'll film. Okay, because okay. you don't have anyone. We don't have else. anyone. Anyone, we don't have anyone. <laughs> we have nobody else. I'm Scott, I'm the Harbour Master or Marina Manager here at Ocean Marina Yacht Club. This is Moses. Moses? <laughs> Say hello, buddy. Hello. No. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I, I'd never heard of Patia until yeah. I came here. And when I got here, I thought, wow. It's amazing, why, isn't why, it? Why don't more people know about Patia? I know. And the trouble is you Google Patia. Yeah. yeah. And doesn't come up with the amazing islands and no. the great sailing. We spent a lot of time in the last 10 years improving the marina. We've got great islands just for the day. Further east on the Cambodian border, yeah. you've got Koh Chang, Koh Kut, Koh Mang. Yeah. I think that's probably the best of the Gulf. I agree. Our time here has been made by you. Like, honestly, like organizing our event, and just looking after us and all the people that flew in. So like genuinely, I, it heartfelt thank you. Yeah. It, it's really, yeah, been yeah, amazing. I, I kind of enjoy it. It's it's exciting when people come here. Yeah. Um, I'm proud to show the marina. Yeah. We're gonna miss this place. We are. We are. Okay, let's do some passage planning. We've got these oil fields and we need to go kind of between them. So we need to kind of make our way down this way. That will work best with the weather anyway, because we've got all of this kind of low wind here and then we've got these easterlies here. So we go from here, we kind of make our way in this direction mm -hmm. and then at some point we'll just turn south and we'll come through this gap here and then once we're through the oil fields then we will need to turn a little bit more east. There. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. 
we get much lighter and fluky winds when we're closer to land. So if we want to make some east, we need to kind of do up here, not come down this way. Right. So I think it might be better just to kind of go like this and then come down because right. we'll get a better point of sale. Right. It's going to be it's going to be what we get. I think basically we need to have at least. I'd like to try and get at least 20 to 30 degrees apparent. If we got oh, yeah, yeah, no, that's right. If we get 30 apparent on this, I mean, what I would say, I think actually we're going to be sailing to the apparent wind more than anything else, minimum. Oh, that's a look. What? So that's, the, that's tomorrow. So it's going to be very, very light and fluky, I, I suspect. Right. If, we can, if we can get a point of sail, we'll go this way. If we can't get a point of sail, let's go that way. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, and it's got one. Uncle Phil's got some birthday present. All right, I'm going to slip that in and uh, you guys should go your way. Are you in any state to explain to our lovely viewers what the heck is going on and what's wrong with our water maker? It's a bearing that's gone. Phil is now reassembling it and with a little bit of pixie dust and luck, we may have a white, we should hopefully have a functioning water maker. The pump was just one element that we found that went wrong. And when I say we, I mean you. No, so when you say we, when I say me, I mean Phil. Okay. Let's give it a go, right? All it's right. the seacock open. I think you closed it. It's 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 run, we want to try again. I'm We are leaving tomorrow morning no matter what. I know it sounds funny, but I just can't stand the pain. Still not working. I feel a Nick are just in full attempting to diagnose the issue mode. We've been obviously doing this for days. Obviously it's the 11th hour now and we really need to either get this working or we're leaving. Sailing from here to Phuket, I think is about 1600 miles without a water maker is gonna be inconvenient to say the least. It will essentially mean that we're not really able to dilly dally. We'll have to just hightail it between marinas. So basically, this is still leaking. My guy bring more shit. Our water maker won't seal. So. So is I, that the pump? What is that? It's the strainer housing. There's a secondary strainer here. So basically, and I'm just going to call this out because, okay. So fresh water comes in, seacock, primary strainer. Yeah, secondary strainer. And there was a, an elbow joint on here. There was an elbow joint there that had been like bodged and I'm, that's a technical expression essentially it was an it's a non it's a bulkhead fitting that had been used in a wet environment now I, I think it came assembled like this but you know whatever uh, and so it exploded and recreating a seal here because what they had done whoever did this I think it came from the water maker manufacturer because this is a pre-assembled part there was a um, a bandage in Sikaflex holding the, the two part, the two split threads part, and they'd made a, an O-ring in Sikaflex. It was always going to fail. Plastics do corrode in salt water, and if you look at one end of it, it's gone pink. There's literally this, this whatever leaching out of it, and it would have failed. And Phil has spent two days trying to seal this again, uh, and his current thinking, which is a, actually a good way of thinking, is that while there is air in the system, the water maker cannot make water. Uh, well, it's half past eight and we've called it a day. We've been working for 12 hours. All right, well, let's start with the positives. Positives, the canvas guy, like, worked his tushy off. Whatever the reason, the delays, you know, he got everything done and the work looks really good. So we've got all our canvas work that we asked for. Ice machine, that started working again now. The f***er is the water maker. The water maker just is... I kind of think it's one of those things where one problem caused another problem caused a third problem the module that we that, that had this kind of like dicky elbow fitting that fractured i think it was leaking for a while it was such a bodge it was such an absolute bodge we could never work out where the water was coming from in our sump we would our bilge pump would cycle all the time yeah. like, where is this water coming from so we pickled it put it back to bed when we came back to the boat to start it up again, it just didn't sound right. It sounded like there was air in the system. And it would appear that what has happened is that this part, this, this elbow fitting has slowly failed and introduced a lot of air into the system. Now, 
eventually the whole thing just exploded. The 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 the, 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 the this little elbow joint just just watch me your hand. It's because you're putting your hand between your face and the lips. Sorry. This little elbow joint just split. Loads of air was going into the system, and I think it was just because it was leaking water. Air was getting in, and it wasn't. So I think the system is full of air. Anyway, Phil spent two days trying to rebuild this, and we re rebuilt it this afternoon using <laughs> this. Like literally, this is. I, I bought this mat to make coffee. It's a barista tamping tool. I made a like a washer out of this, a rubber washer, just so we could actually get some pressure on it. Sealed it all up. Phil just had all these, he knows where to get the parts. So that got fixed. The system still won't bleed. We changed the filters, changed the filters, flushed everything through, fresh water flush, everything. And then when it all went up and it all started going again, a low pressure fitting exploded at the other end. And I don't know. And he, Phil doesn't have any more parts. It's eight o'clock, the poor bugger's worn out. But we've run out of time we have to go i believe and phil believes with some degree of certainty that that failed that failed part has put a lot of air into the system and now my diagnosis and as i said this will all be resolved probably by the time you get to see this <laughs> is that number one the air in the system has been going into the system for a while yeah and that can mean a couple of things either there's a big airlock somewhere or there's air across the membrane or there's so much air that's been put across the clark pump that the membrane was not pickled properly because air's getting in there, and if you've got air, you could have algae. Anyway, we'll anyway. see you again next week. Hopefully, when we will have a boat that's still intact and then we'd have water, we're not like fucking lost at sea. Hope you enjoyed that one. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. See you later. Today is departure day. The wind is still coming up from the south and they're punching into it. It's a little bit less comfortable. <laughs> But at least we're making our way towards Malaysia. No, 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 stop. And this is what I was hoping for, sailing the Gulf of Thailand. We have just arrived into Malaysia. So beautiful. What a welcome into this brand new country. So excited. I can see Indonesia. We're in Malaysia and we're right next door to Singapore. Crazy, right? We are doing something very exciting today and possibly quite stressful. So we're just entering the Singapore Strait now. Singapore Police, Singapore Police, this is your Ruby Rose 2, over. East off the main halyard and the main dropped about a foot and it just jammed. It has been quite the journey.